Hi, Rivera, and welcome to our Rivera Veterans and Community Show. Today I have a special community veteran. His name is John Varangia. Did I get it right, John? You got it right, Morris. Thank you. You are a citizen of Rivera, but more important than that, you're a citizen of the community. I appreciate it. So thank that. you for coming on. But before we start the show, I've never done this before, but I would like to do it, is to thank the people that make this show possible. They are the people that work behind the scenes that you seldom see. Bob Driscoll. He likes to be called Bobby Driscoll, and Jessica Simpson, and of course my boss, Bob Dunbar. So folks out there, thank you for the beautiful job you do. And now we can get back with you, John. Thank you. First of all, tell us, you work for the city of Rivera. Mm -hmm. yes, so I you do. are definitely a community citizen. Tell I us do. exactly what you do. Well, I've been working for the city of Rivera for over 20 years, eight, eight years on the Z Zoning Board of Appeals, but the last 12 and a half years I've been one of the city assessors. And what is the job of the assessors, approximately? Well, there's a lot of phases to the job, but people usually come in, it's because of property evaluation, to see what a property is value are for assessment purposes. Okay. And people have questions, how could they call the assessor? Can you give them a number to do Oh, that? sure, they can call the assessor. First of all, we're open every day. We're well, open. When, when, city hall, when City Hall is open, we're open. Monday through Thursday, 8.15 to 5. On Fridays, 8.15 to 12.15. Right. Uh, the city hall, the assessor's direct number is 781-286-8170. Okay, our information is available to the public. We're online. People can look up their property value and see what their property is being assessed at. And that's something that, you know, there's about 15,000 parcels in the city, and that information is available. We have a terrific staff. There's three board of assessors. There's myself. There's Andy Ayavano, who's the chairman. And there's also Jane Abrangiforti, who's the office manager. In addition to that, we have Kathy Gravelisi, and we also have Susan Schaefer. And between the five of us, we've been together a long time. We pretty well get things done as they should. Right. When I spoke to you before we went on the air, I asked you about uh, rebates for seniors and mm -hmm. veterans. And I, a lot of people are not how that works. Could you be more specific for us, please? Yes. It, they're basically called statutory exemptions. And there are certain exemptions that are available to selective taxpayers based on some information. As far as the senior exemptions, a senior or widow or widower, right. if a person is either 65 or 70 or a widow or widower, there is that qualification. But it's not just that. There's assets and sometimes an income and asset requirements. So the fact that someone is 65 or 70 or a widow or widower doesn't automatically qualify them. It's one step in the process. But what I encourage people to do, the window is open to come in right now. We open the window in September, and it closes March 31st. They can come in. They can pick up an application. That basically is my baby. That comes, usually comes to me, Right. Those, a, those applications that I review them, probably because of my financial background. I'm the one that's probably more versed on that. And it's not an automatic. We ask people what their assets are. We ask people what their income is. Well, we, we, we document whether they file tax returns. We check to see uh, the information is all inclusive to see if they qualify. In addition to that, there's exemptions for people that are blind. Okay, they get a certificate from blindness. Uh, and then obviously there's something a lot more closer to my heart, my dad being a World War II veteran, like yourself, Morris, there's the veteran's exemption. In order to qualify for an exemption, which is a reduction of your income taxes, if you're a veteran and you have a service-related injury of 10% or up to 99%, you get a letter from the VA stating that fact, and therefore you get $400 off your taxes. If you're 100% disabled, as my dad was deemed a year ago, then there's up to $1,000 off your taxes. And again, you get that letter from the VA, and you bring it into the assessor's office. Obviously, there's other qualifications like owning your own house. <laughs> you need that. But, I mean, those are available. You come into the assessor's office. We give you the particular form. You fill it out. It's a very simple form to fill out. Just a few questions have to be answered. If your house is in trust, you have to be trustee and, ben and one of the beneficiaries. And hopefully we can help you out. And we keep the window open for a very long time. First week in September to the end of March. Mm -hmm. If people qualify the following year, we will send the form to you. Okay? And, you know, we, we try to help out as best we can. Okay, here's my question to you, and these are what people ask me to ask you. Sure. You have to be a, let's talk about just about the veteran's mm -hmm. job, please. In other words, you have to be service, in, uh, injured while you were in the service. Service, in, uh, service related injury. The right. Fact that I'm, the fact that you're a veteran does not 
Unfor at least in my opinion, unfortunately, you don't get money off for that, off your real estate taxes. There may be some other well, benefits yeah, available, right. not in the assessor's office, and that you should see the veteran's agent for. Okay, so in other words, even though, like, I may be a disabled veteran, but it's not a service-connected injury? That is correct. Nothing off? No. Okay, so it has to be service-connected. Service-connected. And you get that letter from the Veterans Administration. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, that's a... Now, uh, question number two. If you are a service-connected veteran injured in mm -hmm. time of war, mm -hmm. any age limit on that, or it doesn't make any... No, no. If you're There's a no you age, do, so you, you don't do, have you, to... No, you can, uh, yes, we have people like you, World War II vets like my dad, we've had people in the Iraqi war, we've had people in, no, absolutely, if you're service related, 10% or more, you will, uh, giving any other qualifications such as ownership of home right. or whatever else, you will qualify. So the person that I asked me this question, I can answer it safely. Even if you're 20 years old and service connected, you, go, you, you do get a disability. You, you go over and you service, our, you service our country, unfortunately, if you get injured and it's 10% or more and you own your home, you come into the office, you right. file the form, chances it sounds like they're pretty good that they're going to qualify for it. And if you're 80 years old and not service-connected disability, you don't get nothing off. No, if you're not service-connected, okay. at least for real estate tax purposes. Right. right. I hope that answers that gentleman's question. And if they have any questions, they certainly can come to the assessor's office and talk to us. Okay. Now I want to talk about your family a little. Mm -hmm. Your father was a World War II veteran. I'm a World War II mm -hmm. veteran. Your father had to be awful young to get in at 44. Mm -hmm. He must have been about 17 or 18. My, 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 my dad was drafted, and, and it's kind of, obviously, as you know, it's kind of touchy losing my dad just two months ago. Um, my dad was drafted into the service a month short of his 18th birthday. He was 17, and he served in the South Pacific on um, the USS Fall River. And uh, you actually can go down to the battleship Cove down in Fall River, and you can see the hull of his ship. Oh. Two years ago, I took my father down there, and he saw that, and he got to touch the hull of his ship for the first time in 66 years. It was quite a, it was a very emotional. Very emotional. It, yeah. re it really was, and it was great for me to actually see what my father as a young man had stood on. And he served there. He was discharged um, June 27, 1946, and he did serve in the South Pacific. He told me many stories about, he said, when the, uh, the testing of the atomic bomb, he said, Johnny, we were, we were out there and we saw them shoot it up. They, there was no protection. They didn't know back then the dangers of radiation, which I personally think to help, unfortunately, led to his illness that caused his death a couple of months ago. Oh, sure. What about your mama? My mom, my mom, I love my mom. She, thank God we still have her. She looks great. Um, like my dad, was very, very active. My, my dad, as you know, was, uh, was an All-American commander at the Beachmont VFW, and he... He played in a band for a number of years. What is from He play, He sang and he played his uh, guitar, Johnny V and the Moonlighters. It was, um, and my mom, she was very active down the Beachmont VFW herself. She was a ladies' auxiliary president. Still can cook up a song, and uh, she looks great, all 90 pounds of her. So, I mean, it's a little difficult. I'm not going to argue it's not a little difficult, you know, losing my dad. They just celebrated 60 years of marriage in July, and I absolutely believe that my father lived because he wanted to make the 60 years. And then we had a wonderful celebration. But, you know, Mom's holding her own. God love her. I'm so glad yeah. we still have her. So I salute your dad. May he rest in peace. For his service in World War II. Because a lot of people salute me. But I really wasn't a combatant. He was. Thank you. Thank right. you. Right. So that's what I want to say to you. Thank you. By Mom. the way, you say, say your dad played a musical instrument. Mm -hmm. I play one musical instrument. Perfect. Never made a mistake on it. And it's called the radio. The radio. Oh, okay. Yeah. Me too for that matter. Okay. <laughs> I thought you liked that. John. Tell us a little about your education, first yeah, right. of all. I, uh, Where you grew up as a child? Um, kindergarten and first grade, we lived, at, uh, we lived in Jeffreys Point in East Boston, and uh, like most people back then, we moved over to Revere in, uh, somewhere between late 1961 and early 1962. And so I went to the Barrel School. From the Barrel School, we got transferred over to Paul Revere for one year, then two years at the McKinley, one year at Garfield, and then three years at the Old Revere High School, graduating in 1973. Um, I got my college experience. I got my bachelor's from Northeastern University. Um, I studied three years to pass the CPA exam, becoming a CPA in early 1982. I went back and I got my master's degree from Suffolk in 1985, 1986, which I'm proud to say my son now goes to Suffolk. And Good since, school. Good yeah, school. It's, 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 it's a great school. And since that time, I, I, I got, a, I got a, some insurance licenses. I have some security licenses, and I'm still doing what I do. And I obviously, you know, being with the assessor's office, there was some training involved in that, too. 
I have to say this to you. When I got out of the service, I went to Northeastern, but I had to go to night school because I was already married. I had to work and support a family. At that time, I don't know if they still have it. It was called Lincoln Institute. Is that still? I'm not sure they do. But uh, maybe they do. I don't know. Uh, right. <laughs> And then I went to Lowell Institute, which was the yep. MIT night school. I couldn't mm -hmm. go daytimes, even though I would have been accepted by them. Mm -hmm. But I, when you're young and working, that, and the GI Bill took care of that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I went had to them. Northeastern because of the cooperative program. Right. I mean, we didn't have any money. I mean, it, 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 that's why we went. Now, you and I met a long time ago mm -hmm. down at the. Um, I think it was the Oak Island Nursing Home. Mm -hmm. You was a, a president or charge of, there of someone. Mm -hmm. I can't think of that lady's name. What was that young lady's name who was there? She gave me an honor for playing the music downstairs. Oh, I think it was Scarlett Hunt. I think she was the director. Uh, yeah, she then was the she went to, I don't know who, if it was Chicopee or one of those towns. Mm -hmm. She left to go to work Are you there. talking about Laurie that was with the chamber? Right. It was Laurie Leone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was involved. I was president of the Chamber of Commerce. I, I kind of set the record six years as president on a two-year term, So, that was, although it was broken up four and two at another point. And I was also very active in the Rotary Club. I served as president. But uh, we also had the Interact program. That was a program I was very proud that it's still going on strong. I started that program when I was president of the Rotary Club in 1993. And I believe what we did, Morris, we brought the students down as part of community service, right. and we brought them down to meet with the seniors at the time at the old Oak Island nursing, nursing home. Right. And I it was a lot of fun. And obviously, you were a lot of fun being there. And, we, we <laughs> had, and we've, done, we've done things like that since then, and uh, it, we, we did have a good time that day, right. absolutely, sure. Before we continue, John, you are a real citizen of Revere and a real citizen of the community. And we present these to the military, but your father, who's not here, I would have been proud to give it to him. Mm -hmm. But in honor of him, I'm giving it to you as part of a citizen of the Revere community. Sponsored by the Revere Veterans Committee, Nick Boer, who's mm -hmm. the commissioner, mm -hmm. the city of Revere, and the Revere Allied Veterans Council. So thank you, thank you, thank well, you. Well, pardon me, if, pardon me if I get just a little teary-eyed on me. Again, you know, uh, losing, ahead, um, you know, my father and I, um, I got very close with my dad, and um, always was, but uh, the last few years, um, we found a lot of common ground. He, my, even though my dad was sick, you never knew it. I mean, I had him out for church and breakfast. Can I ask you what his sickness was if I'm not nosy? No, not at all. He, he had, uh, you can watch it on TV, mesothelioma. The oh, asbestos, that's a skin disease. No, it's the asbestos-rated lung cancer. Oh. And it was caused by... The being, radiation. The radiation, being in the service, the Navy Yard. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, I mean, God loved my dad. He was strong stock. He, he, he was only two weeks short of his 88th birthday. And even following the diagnosis of his illness, my father didn't let it stop him. We took our treatments at Dana-Farber, and we'd come, we'd go to lunch afterwards. Um, he was driving four months ago. Um, you mean the step was all of a sudden? Well, I mean, he had been, you know, I mean, it was a, it was a long, it was considered very bad right from the oh. beginning, but he fought the heck out of it. He really did. Being a veteran, like you, never <laughs> say die, and he just gave it his best. He's like, I, I'm going to continue to live. And when, when he was diagnosed, I mean, it obviously wasn't good news because it was inoperable, but we did so many things. We went down to the Battleship Cove. We did that. We had another time the Rotary Club in Chelsea invited us down, and you, you should have went. They had a, a thing that they, they, they had all the boats. They took them out to the Constitution, and, and they shot the guns off to them. Uh, my mom was a little skeptical about him going. like, oh, Johnny, he may not be able to handle it. We went out. A boat broke down. I called my mom. I didn't tell her that the boat broke down. She says, is everything all right? I says, everything's fine. Right. He was fine. I got seasick. We did so many things during the last two years, so there's a lot of great memories. But he was so proud of his military service. He never held it against the military because of illness. Now, he, he was a veteran like you, fought for his country, and he's like, it's part of being a good American. So I, I accept this in honor and memory of my dad. You know, I salute every veteran. Of course, there's not any left from the First World War because they're all gone now. We're getting down there, too, to the ages where we're not going to be around. Maybe for another 10, 15 years, you'll be good talking about Korean veterans. Mm -hmm. But every veteran for me that's alive, Second World War to the Afghan War, who is not alive, mm -hmm. everyone is considered a hero. They consider us the best generation 
everyone that puts on an American uniform is from the best generation. That's the way I look at well, it. I, 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 I agree with you 100%. When people come into the assessor's office and they tell me they're a vet, and the first thing I try to do is I shake their hand and I say thank you. That's what you did to me this morning okay. when I came in. I did. When we were down at the Battleship Cove two years ago, and I asked a gentleman, I said, excuse me, I didn't know this person from Adam. I said, can you take a picture of my father and myself? And my and the man says, sure. And I said, well, it's very important. My father was on, was on the ship. Thank you very much. For it. There's a person we didn't know from Adam. That meant so much to my father. It really did. And I think we need to do that a little bit more. Thank the people that are risking their lives. I mean, he absolutely could have lost his life at 17 years old. And it certainly had an impact on his life, as it turned out. So... And we need to say thank you a little more to that. I was going to thank you because uh, if it wasn't for people like you, I'd be talking to the walls. We wouldn't <laughs> have the Revere Ventures a community show. But you know, it's funny you should talk about that because sometimes people stop me on the street and they recognize me with the hat here, the mm -hmm. World War II, and they say, you got a good show, great show. And I tell them, I says, there's people that come on that make the show good and great if it is good and great. Otherwise, I have no one to talk to. So I would like to say to anyone that's out there, who happens to be a veteran or a non-veteran. That's what the word community means. If you have something good to do for the city of Revere, for the people of Revere, or for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, come on up and let us know. And if you want to email us, you can call us at Revere, I mean, at 781-426-9498. That's our telephone number. Or at revertv.org. Just send an email. Say you'd like to come on. We'd love to have you, John. Just like you come on. Yeah, that's absolutely. John. This may put you a little on the spot, but I like to do that. Tell us something what you like to do in your future. In the future? At yeah. this age? I don't know how old you are. So I <laughs> Older than I ever have been. <laughs> uh, what would I like to do with the future? I, I guess the most important focus of my life right now is I, I have a beautiful wife, my wife Alberta, uh, that obviously you want to take care of her as best I can, and she, she's great. She's been, a great. she's been my wife for nearly 24 years I was going to ask you that. And almost 20 Almost 24 years, I have a 19-year-old son, my son Joshua, uh, who's going to Suffolk, his second year of Suffolk. I don't think he's going to follow in his father's footsteps to become a CPA. A lawyer? I suspect he's going to be a lawyer. He's been very fortunate for the better part of 18 months, almost 18 months, he's been working for the law office of D'Ambrosio and Brown, getting a phenomenal amount of experience. He gets paid for it, too, which is great. <laughs> That's good. Uh, which is great. He loves Suffolk. In fact, he, he had no classes today. I dropped him off in Beach Monday, took the train in to go study today. He loves it. He's involved in, uh, I think he has a flavor for international business law because he knows there's a lot of attorneys, but he's like, I want to do something really specialized. But uh, I think I can see Joshua becoming an attorney. He seems to have that manner about him. So that's my future at this point. Live, stay healthy, take care of my mother, you know, live the American dream. I, I mean, I stayed active in the community, as you know. I don't... I'm not too active in the Chamber of Commerce anymore. I'm still a member, and if they need me for something, I still teach CCD. It's going on 40 years teaching CCD right now, um, and it's been, that's been a long I enjoy doing that. I enjoy being part of the Revere community. I, I always have been. I'm, you know, I, I've been a Revere person for you know, a very long time, more than half a century. John, I don't want to ask you your age. I really don't. Mm -hmm. You've been teaching, you said, 40 years at the CPC? I've been teaching uh, confirmation classes almost 40 years. Yeah. How old were you when you started? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was old enough to vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I I'll just give you one hit. My next birthday is going to really hurt. Okay, the next one's going to hurt. 50 years? Keep going. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, you know, I know I'm getting old, John, because the candles cost more than the cake. Uh, this I cake, well, no. uh, my and I are starting to cost a little more, too, Morris. <laughs> okay. But I suppose it's better to get old than the alternative, so that's all right. I'd like to speak to you about two things about the city of Rivera. Mm -hmm. You lived on uh, that street right across from City Hall, which the name of that street there. Um, where the uh, little police station is. Uh, I work, I didn't live there. Oh, on Pleasant Street? I Pleasant never, Street, yep. I didn't live there, but I, I work at City Hall. Obviously. The tornado that hit, mm -hmm. how did that affect you or the people at City Hall? Well, the City Hall, we were closed for three days. Uh, it, it, it was, I, I remember that day very well. It was a very, uh, 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 that whole July 28th. July 28th, it was, it was a crazy day. I remember that morning, my, my wife actually was away. I called her about 7 o'clock in the morning and it was kind of overcast. And then I went to my office in this building upstairs at, at 8.15. 
And then, uh, because of my dad's illness, I, I decided to go oh, over to right. Immaculate Conception to the St. Jude Mass. And it was raining like I never saw in my life. And then just about 9.30, the only time I ever saw, the doors blew open from the inside. I'm like, oh, my God, what is this? I tried to shut the doors, and I couldn't shut them. Thank God I didn't go outside. I probably would have been flying up in the tunnel over there. We came out about 15 minutes later. I drove down the street because I, I don't live far from the church. And that's when I saw the trees starting to go down. And then I ran into a neighbor who told me that City Hall windows had been blown out. Yep. That's when I said, uh-oh, tornado. And uh, my son tried to get up the street to, the, to Jerry's law office, Jerry Dimbrough's law office. He goes, Dad, you'll never make it up the street. It's, like, it's crazy. That's when I saw the windows were blown out. In this building, some of them, but the windows at City Hall, we were lucky in the expense. The assessor's office, we only had one back window office. The clerk's office got hit pretty bad. The tax collector's office got pretty bad. The side door, windows were blown out there. Trees were down. City Hall was closed for three days. I mean, the mayor's office, I thought the mayor's office, had, and the mayor, he really did a, did a tremendous job. Excellent job. Excellent. I, I thought everybody involved, I mean, uh, the landscape is everybody. Everybody just pitched in. And basically, the city was up and running relatively very soon. I mean, with the, by 10.30, I saw people out there. They were already starting to clear. And you remember, it was like a war zone. It was absolutely incredible. But uh, we basically, we were closed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We were open a little while Monday until we closed. People came in. I came in once or twice just to check on things. But uh, by Thursday, we were up and running, and we basically didn't lose a beat. So it was very impressive, uh, and uh, it, it, it was an unbelievable time to live through the Revere Tornado. It really right. was. I got to thank three. Uh, I, I did that the other day, but I want to do it again. I want to thank the Revere Police Department. Chief Caffarelli and his crew did a beautiful job in protection to make sure there was no, no looting. looting. No you remember, you remember all the all oh, yes. going up there? Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Chief Doherty of the Fire Department for the beautiful job he did. He was the first person I saw. I drove down Sewell Street, and the chief was already there, and I'm like, looks like you're going to have a busy day. And he goes, he just gave me a smirk, you know. No, he was, because he's the one that came over to our senior center mm -hmm. to shut the gas up, because yep. otherwise that building oh. wouldn't be standing today Absolutely. if it wasn't for him. So he came over uh, uh, as, as soon as he got a call from Steve Fielding, our mm -hmm. new director, mm -hmm. he came right over there. Now, some people never thank these people, but I would do it because they do a beautiful job during the whole year and the holidays. Right. I was corrected. I thought they were state employees, but they work for the federal government, and that's the U.S. Post Office. Mm -hmm. And Christmas time and holiday time comes around, and all year long they deliver the mail, whether it's raining, snowing, sleeting, icing, whatever it is, they deliver the mail. So I put them in the same category as the fire department, the police department, and the U.S. Postal mm -hmm. Department. So all three years from the people of Revere, and especially from the veterans community, and Channel Lake Revere, thank you for the beautiful job you people do. I appreciate you saying that. Being a government employee myself, you know, people, when they come in the assessor's office, they don't always say hello. Sometimes they're coming in and they right? It's nice when someone says, thank you, because you can't always give them the that, answer they that, want. But right. if, if they say to you, you showed me courtesy, you showed me respect, you gave me an honest answer, Thank you is a, is, is a nice thing, and I mean, those three people, you, all those people you mentioned, they did a phenomenal job. I'll give you a good example myself. I went into the mayor's office one time to get some help. I didn't know who was going to jump on me to help me, really. Sophia, Joyce, Joyce Miles, Miles, Debbie, all Debbie, of them. Yep. and especially the one of all, the mayor oh, Rizzo, who does a beautiful job for the city of Revere. I see the construction going on. By the way, we got a new thing coming into the city this weekend. The market basket. The market basket. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy about that. It's a lot easier to just go right over to my own hometown to try to drive over to the traffic in the morning. <laughs> I'm very happy, and I think it's going to be great for the community. It's going to provide Definitely. jobs. It's a terrific store, and uh, you know, obviously, to have Market Basket, that's only a, that's a positive thing for the city. Right, and I do want to thank the Market Basket for bringing jobs into the city. Yeah, While well, a group in Boston, I won't mention them, they showed that we don't have the jobs at Suffolk Downs anymore. Mm -hmm. Eight hundred got laid off. Yeah, we'll, get, we'll get laid off. That, 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 that whole thing is it, it's unfortunate when referring to the casino thing. I'm well, referring to the Gaming Commission well, who made well, the we'll, wrong decision, well, in my opinion. Uh, I, I, I totally agree with you. We'll see how that plays out. That's all we can see. We'll John, I don't mean to be rude. We've mm -hmm. got about three minutes left. I'm going to give you two minutes. Say whatever you want. Well, Morris said, <laughs> say no. whatever I want. 
I mean, uh, 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 it, it, it's, it's, it's really great how this... Uh, oh, one, uh, excuse me, I got to interrupt you. Okay. This was given to me before we went on the air, but when you get old like me, your memory's the second thing to go, because I can't remember the first. The city released first ever comprehensive annual financial report, CAFR. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, we, I, got an e I got an email from a director of finance, collector of treasurer, George Anzoni, who basically oversees all the financial departments. And the city received a, a nice reward, an award for reporting. Now, I know that sounds kind of dry, but myself being a CPA, I can appreciate the importance of accurate information. And so the city was acknowledged on that. The tax collector's office, the assessor's office, the auditing office, the purchasing office, MIS, I believe I have them all. And basically it means that we have good and solid record keeping. Now what's important about that is our city bonding. Our director of finance, Judge Zanzoni, has to go to places like Standard and Poor's to get bonding because we do have debt. The better the bonding, the better our credit rating is, the less we pay in interest. So it's very important. It was a nice award to get. They've been giving these awards out since 1976. There's only been like 38 of them, and Revere got one. So that was kind of a nice thing to do. We set the bar high. We hope we can do it again. I know the mayor was very pleased, and we're happy about it. Right, John. I want to take a few seconds off to say thank you for spending the time, the taxpayers, We'll take care of that, so the taxpayers are not going to get in with it. Thank you for taking the time to come on our show and explaining to the people about the assessing office. And I want to thank, and by the way, God bless you too for coming on, and God bless your dad. God bless you too, Mark. Thank you. And I want to thank the people of Revere for listening. I want to thank our service people who service our country, the people of Revere as well, and our great country, the United States of America. Until the next time, thank you, thank you. As we say, adios. Ciao, a Thank you.